by special recording. General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, and Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, presents The Lone Ranger. <laughs> horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It helps a guy feel confident just knowing that champions are made, not born. Otto Graham, famed quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, made himself a champ. Listen. Young Otto, on his way to fame, found football was no sissy game. Took power and speed and head work, too. And Graham learned, as champions do, that Wheaties help a guy come through. Now Otto passes for that score and still eats Wheaties even more. Otto Graham's been calling the right breakfast signal for 23 years. A big bowl of Wheaties. He-Man breakfast? There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Touchdown, Otto! Let's go, boy! Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were in pursuit of outlaw Joe Kelso, who had escaped from jail in Texas. It was in the town of Grand City that Tonto received the latest information about the outlaw. The Indian reached the Lone Ranger's camp in late afternoon. Oh, Oh, Jim Sabi. Yes. Me here, Kelso, hide in town last night. Did the sheriff find him? No. Me talk to sheriff before me come here. Him not know about Kelso till two hour go. Him say him here, Kelso, sneak out of town this morning, ride east to Shelby. Then let's continue after him. Yes, sir. Shelby's about 12 miles from here, Tonto. We could reach there early this evening. Easy, steady, big fella. That's right. Then let's go. Monsieur. Then let's go. It was sundown when veteran prospector Tom Ennis entered the town of Shelby and left his mule at Rufus Tisdale's livery stable. Ruth, I'm going to leave this ornery critter here till tomorrow. I'm taking the night stagecoach over to the county seats. <laughs> going to Grand City, eh? Don't tell me you've struck it rich, Tom. I'm not telling you, Ruth, but that's what I did. What? Ah, yep. See this pouch? It's filled with dust and nuggets. Well, I... Uh, yep, I finally made it, Roof. Once I get to Grand City and file my claim, I'll be the richest man in this part of the country. You'll see. Tom Ennis went directly to the office of the stagecoach company. Uh, let's have a round-trip ticket to Grand City, eh? I want to go tonight and come back tomorrow. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, the coach tonight leaves three hours from now at nine. It'll get in Grand City at uh, 11. Yeah. It'll be $14. Yeah, I'll have to pay in gold dust. Where are your scales? Yeah, they're busted. I sent them away to be fixed. 
Did they have scales across the street in the last shot cafe? I know. Rock Perry, who runs the place, is a crook, but at least he'll have money on hand. I'll go over there and come back from a ticket later. See you then. In the last shot cafe, owner Rock Perry greeted Tom Annis and led the way to his office at the rear of the cafe. When they entered, a young girl who had been standing there turned and faced the cafe owner. Mr. Perry. What are you doing in here, Vicky? I thought you'd quit. I have. But I want my salary. What salary? You don't get a red cent from me. You quit. I didn't fire you. People who quit here don't get paid. But you just can't. Never mind the butts. Get out, huh? Mr. Perry, you must let me have something. Just enough to pay my hotel rent and to, to cover my coach fare to Grand City. If you'll just My let me... dear girl, what you do is no concern of mine. So if you leave now... Well, maybe this is no concern of mine either, but I don't like what you're doing, Rock. Well, isn't that too bad? Once more, I'm not going to see this young lady get stranded in a place like this if she wants to get away. Rock, give her a hundred dollars. What? Are you crazy? I don't have to pay her a cent. She quit. Never mind that part. I don't care about that. Give her a hundred dollars. And I'll give you the gold to cover it. Oh, no. Uh, thank you, sir, but I just couldn't take your money. Now, don't be a feather brain. I'm rich. Take it as a loan. Pay your room rent and catch that stagecoach that goes to Grand City tonight. I'll be on it myself, and uh, I'll watch out for you. Vicki Sanborn protested. Then relented, promising to repay Tom Ennis when she found another job. Rock Perry, without further prompting, let the girl have the money. Vicky departed, and Perry exchanged bills for the prospector's gold. Rock Perry left his office with Tom Ennis and watched the old man go into the street. Then he hurried to tough-looking Pete Logan, who stood at the end of the bar. Logan, you know Tom Ennis, don't you? Sure. That was him that just went out, wasn't it? Yeah. Hurry after him. Don't let him see you, but find out where he goes. Then come back here and tell me. Sure. I'll find out where he goes. Logan returned to the last shot cafe and made his report to Rock Perry. I'll follow the old guy, Rock. He's up in the restaurant eating. That means he'll be here a while. Logan, you know where I'm hiding Joe Kelso, don't you? Uh, in that hotel across the street. That's right. He's in room 208. When he arrived here tonight, he said he needed money. Go tell him I'm ready to give him the chance to earn some. Less than five minutes later, fugitive outlaw Joe Kelso and Pete Logan were in Rock Perry's office. The door was closed, and Perry was talking. But I think the old fellow was telling the truth. He struck it rich. An old goat like that? Yes, he's found gold somewhere. Planning to go to Grand City tonight. So he'll be able to file his claim first thing in the morning. You two will keep him from leaving town. You want him killed? No, Kelso. First, I want to find out where his mine is. I have a cabin on the hills. Take Ennis there. Yeah, but how are we going to get at him without being seen? He's in that restaurant and there's... And I have a plan that'll get him out. I'll write a note now and have my porter Pedro deliver it to Ennis. Meanwhile, you two go out to the stable. It was ten after eight when Tom Ennis, in the corner restaurant, finished eating. The door opened and a Mexican youth carrying a note in his hand entered. He walked directly to the prospector and thrust an envelope into the hand hey, of Tom what? Ennis. Then turned and hurried from the restaurant. Hey, wait a minute. What's the idea? Well, what do you know about that? Wonder what this is. Tom tore open the envelope and removed the letter that was inside. He looked at the signature signed to the short note. Vicky Sanborn. V- Vicky. See, that must be the young girl I loaned the money to. Let's see what it says. The note said that the girl had learned something that would be of interest to Tom Ennis. Why? Something that she must tell him before the stage for Grand City departed. Oh, God. She asked that he meet her secretly at a spot to the rear of the last shot cafe. Tom Ennis crumpled the note in his hand and threw it onto the floor. Then he rose from his chair, paid his bill, and left. It was dark at the rear of the building that housed the last spot check cafe. Tom Ennis made his way slowly, his eyes peering into the inky blackness. 
He stopped and turned. Well, she isn't here yet. Unless... Hey, what, what's that? Miss Vicky, that you? No, it's me. Oh. Oh. Come here, Logan. He's conked. Let's get him out of here. The two men carried the inert form of Tom Ennis to the wagon and placed him inside. Yeah, come on, get up. Kelso drove the wagon through the grove of trees until he reached a seldom-used trail that led into the hills. The wagon continued upward. Get up, come on, up, get up. At that moment, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the outskirts of Shelby. Who's in Shelby? Oh, fella. They could see the lights of the short main street straight ahead. Not many people on the street, Kimasabi. No. Perhaps it'll be safe for me to ride along the rear of the buildings wearing my mask. Ah, uh, it's dark there. Yes, we'll do that then. There are trees back there. I'll wait among them while you make a round of the cafes. If Kelso's in town and in the open, that's where you'll find him. Uh-uh. Easy, Scott, easy, fella. Maybe back, pronto. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. This is Mel Allen, sports announcer. In my work, I watch a good many champions. And you know something? I've never yet heard of a player born a champion. You take the case of Doak Walker, star ball carrier of the professional Detroit Lions. Walker gets started fast, cuts back with ease, has a terrific change of pace. Every move comes from hours and weeks and seasons of practice. In my opinion, it's important, too, that Doak Walker has been eating Wheaties for 18 years since he was nine years old. Sure, Wheaties, breakfast of champions. And that's mighty easy to understand, I'd say. Wheaties are a He-Man food. They help give a guy what it takes to get there and stay there and keep plugging. Naturally. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Now look, maybe you tip the scales at 190, or maybe you're just a little guy dead set to get on your way. All right, bear in mind, champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. Now to continue. Vicki Sanborn arrived at the station five minutes before the stagecoach was scheduled to leave. She looked around for Tom Ennis, saw no sign of him, then went to the ticket agent and made inquiry. The agent had an immediate answer. You old fellow with the whiskers? No, he hasn't shown up yet, ma'am. I, I have his ticket ready. I saw him about half an hour ago. Where were they? Uh, going in the restaurant up on the corner. Uh, if you want to be sure he's here when the coach starts, you could go to the restaurant and tell him he better ankle over here. Perhaps I'll do that. Uh, he your father? Oh, no, he's, well, a friend. And without knowing why exactly, I'm concerned about him. Do you mind looking after my baggage while I go to the restaurant? Not at all, ma'am. Go right ahead. Your stuff's safe. Thank you. Vicki Sanborn hurried to the restaurant and entered. She looked at the empty tables and frowned. The owner came to her. You, uh, looking for somebody, Miss Sanborn? Yes. Was there a man with whiskers in here a little while ago? He was dressed oh, in Oh, a... uh, you mean old Tom Ennis. Yes, he was here. Tom's going to meet you, I reckon. He received your note all right. My note? Yeah. I didn't mean to peek, Miss, but Tom must have thrown it away. Because after he left, while I was cleaning away the dishes, I found it. Just naturally had to see what was on it, and <laughs> Well, it was from you to him. Let me see it, please. Sure, here. Yeah. Well, well, I never wrote this. I never... Who brought this message, do you know? Sure, Rock Perry's porter. That Mexican Pedro, he... Miss Sanborn, don't you want to... I've heard it now. 
Vicky Sanborn ran to the last shot cafe. She hurried up the front stairs and pushed past an Indian who stood there. Do you mind? Please. Okay. Otto saw the girl's white face and flashing eyes. Uh, girl, plenty excited. Me better see what her do. Vicky Sanborn, her eyes blazing, burst into Rock Terry's office and slammed the door shut behind her. Perry, who had been adjusting his gun belt, stared in surprise as she spoke. Where is he? What did you do with him? Say, what's this all about? What are you talking about? You know well what I'm talking about. I just found this note. The what? Note? I don't understand. You do understand because you wrote it. Hmm? You sent Mr. Ennis this note so you could get him here and rob him of his gold. My dear girl, you must be insane. Now, why would I want to do a thing like that? Because you're a thief, that's why. I'm not going to leave here without Mr. Ennis. I don't know where he is. I don't know what your little game is, All but... right. I'll go and get Sheriff Taylor. Now, wait. Come back here. No, I'll get the sheriff and we're... You get oh. back in here, I said. Let go of me. Go of me. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, punch, will you? Uh... Well, when I tell you to do something, I mean it. Help! Someone outside! Please! You little wild kid! Vicky's screams had been heard outside in the cafe. Tonto, nearest to the office, was the first to rush inside. He saw Rock Perry with one hand across the girl's mouth, dragging her across the room. Tonto leaped. Here, you take hands off, girl. Hey, watch it. Tonto pulled Perry away from the girl. Men from the cafe crowded into the room. It's an engine trying to kill Rock. As the men converged around the struggling couple and pulled Tonto from the badly shaken Perry, Vicky Sanborn, recovering her composure, tried to intercede. Now, don't hurt that Indian. Please. He was trying to help me. Don't pay any attention to her. Throw him out. Beat him up. Shoot him. I don't care what you do. Take him out of here, that's all. No. Get this hair, someone. Rock here is Close trying to... Close your mouth. Now, uh, boys, I'm having girl trouble. Let us alone, huh? You stay right here, Vicky. My wrist. Go on, boys, will you? Get rid of that interfering red skin. Let go of that man. Hey, 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 mask man. Drop that gun. Oh, my arm. You too. Oh, Anyone else want to go for his gun? Oh, no, me. No, me. Glad you come, Kimo Sammy. Rock Perry tried to keep me from going to the sheriff. The sheriff? Why? Because I think he's harmed or maybe even killed a man who befriended me today. Huh? You, you men here, you're not all bad. Some of you must believe in law and justice. Uh, what are you talking about, miss? We're all law-abiding. It's this Indian and masked man holding us here with guns that are outlawed. That's right. I'm on the side of the law, believe me. I'll prove it. Get the sheriff here at once. Let him hear this girl's story, whatever it is. No. No, boys. Don't go for the sheriff. Do you hear that, you men? It proves what I was starting to say. Rock Perry's afraid of the law. He doesn't want the sheriff to hear my story. I think Vicky's right, fellas. Right. Right. Ranger, I'll go get the sheriff if you're on the level about what you said. Yeah. Put your hands down and go then. All right. Yeah. Hey, don't. If you don't... You stand still. Yeah, stay here, Rock. Vicky's a nice girl. She wouldn't lie. Oh, wait. Hello. Manage the arms of those two men I shot. Yeah. Okay, Miss Abby. Need to it. The rest of you men, put your hands down. But I'll have my guns ready in case any friend of this man, Rock Perry, tries to make a play. Don't worry about that part, stranger. Now, this, if you don't mind, while we're waiting for the sheriff to come, let's hear your story. Yes, I want to tell it. Because if Tom Ennis is in danger, I want you all to help him. Vicki Sanborn told her story and showed the letter with her forged signature. When she finished, the men, visibly angry now, turned their attention to Rock Perry. Perry! What about this? Where's Tom Ennis? Yeah, where is he? Hey, get Pedro here. I'm here, senor. Here's Pedro. What the girl says is the truth. Senor Rock, tell me to take note to the restaurant. Here goes Rock. Grab him. Rock Perry had turned as if to run. The men grabbed him and pulled him into the cafe. Let's take him to the sheriff now. Let's not wait. As the mob pushed and jostled Perry, taking him to meet the sheriff, the Lone Ranger whispered to Tonto. That note said Ennis was to meet the girl behind this place. Let's see if there's any sign of his being here. The Lone Ranger and Tonto hurried to the grove where their horses were tied and removed a lantern from their packs. In the light cast on the ground, they saw bloodstains and the freshly made imprint of a body. Ah. And their footprint here, Kimasabi. Yes, Toto, heading in this direction. And look, mark made by horse, wagon wheels. They're fresh, too. The bloodstains trail to where the wheel marks end. And that mean them hurt man carry him to wagon. Yes, Toto. The wagon marks lead into the hills. Ah. 
We found the trail now, Kimasabi. I'll do that, Taro. Perry may tell everything to the sheriff, but we can't be sure. You go and find the sheriff now. Uh, me tell him about marks we find back here? Yes. Meanwhile, I'll follow the trail. A few minutes later, a rider sped into the hills following the wagon tracks, now outstanding in the light of the moon. Monsieur! In the hideout cabin, less than two miles from Shelby, the two crooks, outlaw Joe Kelso and Pete Logan, completed the search of Tom Ennis's clothes. Beneath the inner sole of his shoe, they found the paper they sought. Yeah, here it is, Logan. A claim he was going to file. See? It's got all the markings and everything else. Smart old geezer, aren't you, Ennis? You wouldn't tell us where it is, but we found it just the same. And now what do we do? Take this and give it to Rock? If you want to get paid off, that's what we'll do. Yeah. Wasted over an hour trying to make him talk, and all the time we should have been searching. Well, now that you have it, what are you going to do with me? Kill you. What else? Kill me. He don't have to do that. Tell Rock Perry he can keep the mine. Let him file. I'll look for another one. Sorry, old man, but we can't take chances. If you ever were free and the law knew I was in Shelby, I'd go back to prison for life. You are going hey, back hey, to prison. Hey, look at the window. Oh! My arm's broken. Well, oh. an inch and I'll shoot again. Glory be, I'm saved. I'm coming through the window, Tom. But when I leave, we're going through the door with these crooks in front of us. <laughs> Tonto, following the trail, led the sheriff and his posse to the hideout cabin. When they entered, they found the Lone Ranger and Tom Ennis ready to leave with the two outlaws. The sheriff was surprised. Isn't, isn't this one Joe Calso? Yes, Sheriff. It was a stroke of luck that brought us to him. His bad luck. Well, what do you know? Rock Perry told us he had two men take Tom here. But he didn't tell us one of them was Kelso. Perry did confess, you say? Yes. And the girl Vicky Sanborn gave us leads on a lot of other theory he went in for. He's ready to confess to those jobs, well, too. Uh, Vicky, you mean the girl is still in town? She was supposed to take the night stage for Grand <laughs> City. <laughs> She's waiting for you, Tom. You can go with her tomorrow. If it weren't for Vicky, we wouldn't be here. Do you have your location papers? Yep. Yeah. The mask man took them from... from say... Where is the masked man? Leaving, Tom. Tom and I were after Joe Kelso. We found him, and he's in the hands of the law, so we're finished. Adios. Uh, goodbye. Oh, God, did, did you hear that? He saved my life. And Vicky Sanborn's life also, Tom. I'll tell you about that later. I want to hear everything, Sheriff. But that masked man walked out of here as if he'd done nothing. Done nothing? Besides saving your lives, he's rid Shelby of that crook, Rock Perry. Uh, but then you must expect that sort of thing from him. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. fly a jet. He's 12 years old and the fastest yet. He can loop the loop because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios. The cereal shaped like little letter O's. You know, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is a real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, 
is created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. Directed by Charles D. Livingston. And edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.